So you've finished your prototype, now you want to share it with the world. I'm just going to go back to my home page of index here. Um, so there's two ways you can do that. You can use the Axia Cloud, which is great for sharing prototypes with clients, uh, with uh, people testing it, um, and with teams. You can also generate HTML and host it on your own web host. Uh, for this unit, we are asking you to use Axia Share because it is just simpler and it is what you would be doing in industry to share your prototypes uh, with people testing it or people giving feedback. So you need to be logged in with your email address first. So you need to log in with your Axio portal uh, details, your email address and your password. And then we go up to publish. And you can see that one of the options here is publish to Axia Cloud. Okay, I've published previously, let's pretend I'm publishing it from scratch. So I've got uh, my project name, give it a name that will be easy to remember. If you are publishing confidential or sensitive information, you only want certain people to have access to it, you can also add a password. Now you can choose whether you want people to allow to uh, people to be allowed to comment or not. I'm going to leave the comments on so I can show you um, the full capabilities for if you are testing this with uh, people. So uh, on the pages tab, you generate all pages if you want all of them, or if you just want to generate a couple of them, you can deselect generate all pages and choose which pages. If you have a very big website and only want to test certain bits of it, that makes much more sense and will save you time. If you have made notes in the inspector pane on any of your widgets, you can choose whether it is going to publish the notes or not. It may be notes within a team that you don't want a client to necessarily uh, see because they don't need to see it. With interactions, if you're having weird instances where you're seeing case names show up uh, on the screen, you can choose to never show those case names. I'm going to leave everything at the default settings so you can see what it looks like on the final website. And of course, with your fonts, this is your last chance to check that you definitely have added web fonts and you have done the font mappings to make sure that will work on another computer. Always test that on another computer that doesn't have the font installed to see if it works. Okay, once you're happy with all those settings, you just click on publish. And if I zoom out and down here, great, your project has been published and this is where it is. So you can just click on it. You can copy the URL if you need to email it to someone or you can just click on the link to go there. Okay, so there are my pages. Let's have a look at the different pages here. They're all linked together. Now, something you will notice that is interesting is this bar up the top that is generated along with the HTML. Uh, this is fantastic for user testing. So you see this little comment symbol. If I click on that, I can add a comment on the screen. Um, so I might say, um, change the color of the menu buttons. And there we go. We now have that comment. You can turn that, whoopsie, hang on, didn't want that to happen. Move that out of the way. Can't delete it there, but that's okay. So you can turn, oh goodness, it keeps just adding new ones. Okay, exit comment on screen. Okay, so now I can move this around as need be, or I can turn that off. And it felt, fortunately, because I didn't type in the other one, it didn't add another comment. So that can be handy for people giving you feedback on a design. You can also make a comment that isn't placed on the website, web page itself. Um, so, you know, um, add a sticky header. There we go. So you can get a lot of feedback from a lot of different people using that. Uh, you can also have a look at the notes if you've published those notes for the widgets. Uh, you can show hotspots. You can turn off the comments if you don't want it disturbing the design. Uh, you can also change the size of uh, the view. Okay, over here, 
you have access to the navigation. Now, all of this is fantastic for testing purposes, but obviously it's not what a final website looks like because you wouldn't have this bar up here. If you want to view it without the bar, and this is why I always name the home page index, just like with our HTML, index.html, instead of all of this uh, code at the end here, all we do is we type in index.html. And there we go, now we can see our website without that bar up the top and as we click our links, it's all working like a final website.